Thank y'all so much. What a blessing. And another blessing that I have today is introducing my dad. Y'all know him, Walter Albritton. He's going to read our scripture text this morning. And uh, apparently on the 306 video, you shared that this was the first time you've ever read video. I mean, re ever read a scripture for me when I was going to preach. So I'm honored that you're, you're here. Uh, he's sitting about three feet from where he gave his life to the Lord uh, back in 1950 or 49, 1950. And uh, he's been serving the Lord Jesus for a long time. The good news found in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Last week, we celebrated the triumphal entry of King Jesus into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And only seven days have passed since he has ridden into Jerusalem, but so much has happened. Imagine how the disciples must have felt in that moment. They were shocked at the events that had transpired on Friday. They were mourning over the death of their Lord and Savior and friend, and they were hiding in fear for their own lives. Jesus had warned his disciples that the road to Jerusalem led to the cross, but they did not understand him. Now Sunday has arrived and everything is about to change. Why do you look for the living among the dead? That's a great question. And that's the question that these angels pose to the women who are at the tomb but even better than that question is the reply, he is not here. He is risen. He is alive. He lives. He is alive today and he lives in your hearts. He lives in us. And we have abundant life because he is alive and living in each of us. This morning, I wanted to take a, a closer look at our text the first verse says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. On Friday, after Jesus had died, Joseph of Arimathea received permission to bury Jesus in his own tomb. And according to John 19, Joseph and Nicodemus took the body, wrapped it in fine, fine linen, and then applied the myrrh and aloes Nicodemus had brought the women who had attended Jesus followed Joseph and Nicodemus and saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was laid in it, and then they rested on the Sabbath. Now it's Sunday morning, and the women have made their way back to the tomb, and Luke tells us that it was early in the morning. Some of you got up this morning and came to our sunrise service 
Uh, so you kind of understand a little bit about what those women were going through. It was cold, it was dark, and it was not easy to get out of bed this morning. But obviously you felt that there was something of greater value than sleeping in this morning. So you got up early and you came and worshiped with us this morning. Well, these women also felt that there was something more important than sleeping in on that first Easter morning. So they got up, they took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. Why did they take the spices to the tomb? Out of love and respect for the crucified Lord. They were going to anoint his body in the grave. They fully expected to find Jesus dead and lying in the tomb. Instead, we read in verses 2 and 3, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. I like that. They found the stone rolled away, but they did not find Jesus. They were looking for Jesus among the dead, but he wasn't there. The stone had been rolled away. The tomb was open so that they could look in, not for Jesus to get out. Many people are still looking for Jesus among the dead in these days. I think of the scholars who have studied God's word and, and read the words of Jesus in the gospel manuscripts and do not believe in Christ's resurrection. I think of the archaeologists who are still trying to find the body of Jesus in a tomb, but they keep coming up empty. I think of the people who wear the cross of Christ, but they do not know the reality of the living Christ today. They're looking for Jesus among the dead. And if you're looking for Jesus among the dead, you will not find him there. One of the great preachers in our Methodist tradition was Dr. W.E. Sangster. He was a member of the British Methodist Church, and he had a very fruitful ministry at Westminster in London. Billy Graham described him as the greatest preacher of the 20th century. My father had the privilege of hearing Dr. Sangster preach three months after my brother, his son, our brother, died of leukemia. And one of the things that dad remembers about that sermon that Dr. Sangster preached at Lake General Lusk up in North Carolina was it inspired him to keep going. I like that. For 73 years, you've been doing ministry and working on your 74th year now. And I thank God that Dr. Sangster inspired you to keep going. I, I praise God for that. And in his biography that was written by his son, Paul, he tells about how in the last two years of Dr. Sangster's life, he contracted an illness and was slowly and gradually losing his voice. And finally, Dr. Sangster was unable to preach or speak at all. And in this biography, his son tells how he preached the greatest sermons towards the end of his life when he could not say a word. He preached them with his witness. He preached them with his life. He preached them with his love for people and he preached them with his sweet spirit. Paul writes, I heard my father preach the most wonderful sermons I've ever heard in my life, but I never heard him preach like he did the last three months of his life when he could not whisper a word. It was beautiful to see his lovely, radiant, peaceful, trusting life when he knew he was running to the end. It was on the occasion of Dr. Sangster's last Easter when he wrote a letter to his daughter, Margaret, who was a missionary in India. He said, Margaret, what a dreadful thing to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice to shout, He is risen! But far more awful, far more dreadful, far more terrible, and far worse is to wake up on Easter morning and have a voice and not have the glad message of the resurrection to proclaim, to shout, he is risen. What a testimony. Guess what? Dr. Sangster found the risen Christ and he put his faith in him as Lord and Savior to the very end of his life, shouting, he is risen. Which brings us to the good news of Easter. Look at verse 4 again, if you will. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothing that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. These were no ordinary men. 
They appeared out of nowhere. Their clothes were shining like lightning. They, the other gospels rather confirmed that these were angels, messengers sent from God to witness to the resurrection of Jesus. And their clothes were still burning bright with the glory of heaven. The Shekinah glory was still on them. Now, I've never seen an angel, at least not knowingly. Angels have been known to travel in disguise. We're unaware of them sometimes when they come into our lives. But when angels do appear, one thing always happens. The scripture is very clear. People fall down on their faces in fear. It's an instinctive reaction. The Bible describes angels as majestic and glorious beings. And we fall down before them. The women of the tomb were no different in their fright. The women bowed down with their faces to the ground and the angels told the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Then they remembered Jesus' words. Jesus told his followers again and again that this would happen to him when he came to Jerusalem. So Jesus' arrest should not have surprised his followers. Jesus' crucifixion and death should not have surprised his followers. And Jesus' resurrection should not have surprised his followers. Jesus told them all these things in advance. And yet somehow the meaning of these things escaped them. And it was only after these things had happened that they remembered what Jesus had said. That's why these women showed up with the spices at Jesus' grave on Easter morning looking for a dead man. The angel said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. That's the good news of Easter. Jesus has conquered sin and death and the grave. He has rose from the dead and he did it on Easter morning and he is alive and well today. And he offers you new life so that you can have eternal life, so that you can have abundant life. And the Bible tells us that those who trust in Christ will also share in his resurrection. The fear of death and judgment is taken away. Only one question remains. How will you respond to the risen Christ? We see several responses highlighted in our text this morning. First, there's the response of the women if you look at verses 9 and 10, when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others who told them to the apostles. They came back from the tomb and told them all these things. They must have been frightened. They must have been confused. They certainly didn't understand everything that had happened to them that day. But there was one thing they could do. They could share what they experienced. And that's exactly what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you to share my testimony of what I've experienced. He wants you to share what you have experienced in your life. He wants you to share how God has, has met you and saved you and provided for you and answered your prayers and delivered you from the from the the things that, that have caught you up in, in your lifetime. Jesus wants us to testify to what he has done for us. And, and you are an expert in your own testimony. Jesus' body is no longer in the grave. The angel said that he is risen from the dead and the women believed it and they shared their faith with others. Are you a believer in Jesus' resurrection this morning? Do you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. If so, you need to share your faith with others just like the women. Jesus died and rose again. That's good news, and good news is worth sharing. Don't keep the good news of Easter all to yourself. That'd be selfish. Share with other people the astonishing good news that God sent his son to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven and have eternal life. What better way to respond to the good news of Easter than to share it with others? That was the response of the women. Secondly, there was the response of the apostles. Look at verse 11. They did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. The women believed in the good news of Easter 
and they shared their faith with others. But the apostles did not believe, or at least at first did not believe. But their initial reaction, their initial response mirrors the response of so many people today. They don't believe in all this Jesus stuff. It all seems like nonsense to them. And so they do nothing with the good news. They do nothing with what they've been told. They dismiss the story of Jesus outright and they continue to, to live their lives as if nothing happened on that first Easter Sunday morning. These are two options. Either you believe that Jesus rose from the dead or you don't believe. But there's a third option and it's illustrated in Peter's response. Look at verse 12. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. He pondered what was going on in his life. He thought about it. He gave it some thought. He, he, he was confused probably a little bit, but he wasn't going to say it was nonsense. If you're not sure what to make of Jesus' resurrection, there's a third option. Rather than simply rejecting it as nonsense and walking away from God's grace, you can do what Peter did. You can check it out for yourself. Peter ran to the tomb. He examined the evidence. He saw the stone had been rolled away. He entered the empty tomb and saw the strips of linen lying there that once contained the body of Jesus. He went looking for Jesus. And you know what? He found him. Not lying dead in a tomb, but resurrected and alive. The Bible tells us that Jesus appeared to Peter before he appeared to the other apostles. This must have taken place sometime after Peter left the tomb. At first, Peter was not ready to believe that Jesus was alive, but he did not dismiss it as nonsense. You owe it to yourself to investigate the claims of Christianity and be like Peter. Check it out for yourself. Today in our world, people are still wondering about the empty tomb. Tammy and I had the privilege of going to the garden tomb in, in 2006. We both went inside the tomb. Jesus wasn't there. It's still empty. He is risen. He is alive. Amen? There are also people who are still looking for the living among the dead. There are archaeologists who still believe that one day they will find the ossuary that contains the bones of Jesus. In fact, 20 years ago, uh, a professor from Asbury Theological Seminary where I graduated claimed that he had found that ossuary and then he was disproven. There are still people looking for that. Then there are people who have forgotten what they've been told. People who have heard the good news because, and, but because they thought it was nonsense, they've forgotten it. They've dismissed it. And then there are people who are telling everyone Everything they know about Jesus. The angels asked the women that first Easter Sunday, why do you look for the living among the dead? Let me say this again. If you're looking for Jesus among the dead, he is not there. You'll never find him there because he is alive. He lives. But if you look for Jesus among the living, you will discover the living God. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the truth of God's word. Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. On that first Easter morning, Jesus turned their darkness to light. He turned their weeping to rejoicing. And he turned their tears of sadness to tears of joy. And that's what he wants to do for you today. He wants to turn your darkness to light. He wants to turn your weeping to rejoicing. And he wants to turn your tears of sadness to tears of joy. The living Christ can do that. And if you put your faith in the living Christ, he will transform your life like never before. And I pray this morning that, that you will believe what God wrote and what's been proclaimed today and that you will put your faith in Jesus, the living Lord. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for 
giving us life, abundant life, eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to worship you, to give you the glory and the honor that you deserve. But we also thank you, Lord, for the privilege of sharing the good news with everyone we meet. Help us to be people who are telling everyone everything we know about Jesus. In these days, people need to hear that because people are dying each and every day without ever knowing about Jesus. And Lord, you've called us as followers, as believers, to share our faith, to share the good news of the risen Savior. And I pray today, Lord Jesus, that you will give us the strength and the courage to do just that. And we pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. This morning, perhaps you are ready to recommit your life to Christ. Or perhaps you're ready to give your life for the first time to Jesus. Whatever the Lord is telling you to do, I encourage you to obey him.